Hey, welcome back to Sober Now. I'm Jim LaPierre. At the time of this filming, uh, we're about two weeks into COVID-19, and I'm watching social media and hearing from folks about what it's like to be sheltered at home, what it's like to have to adjust to so many unknowns and, and changing circumstances. And I, I like to remind people, uh, first and foremost, not to panic. And I, I get it. It's scary to live in these times and to not know even what's going to develop next. But I remind us that we've been through hell already. We've gone through hardships. We've lived with unknowns. We have a lot of experience at this kind of thing. And I kind of laugh when I see Facebook memes from folks who live with anxiety who say, well, finally, now you all understand how I feel all the time. So as this uh, starts to unfold, I'm talking with folks about what it's like to uh, be homeschooling, what it's like to um, have the whole family at home. And two weeks in, I, I definitely am seeing a lot of cases of cabin fever. And that's completely understandable. One of the things that I've been talking about with therapists this week, as uh, so many of my people are getting used to telehealth, is the challenge of involving couples and families in therapy through telehealth. Because typically this is something people most often do one-on-one. -on -one. And if we get a little bit creative and, and expand the technology a bit, then we can certainly involve more people in treatment, in uh, recovery programs of every kind. And the opportunity that I want to make sure we're not missing is that if we find ourselves uh, at home with family, if things are going great in your family, if everything's healthy, then I'm happy for you. Uh, it, for me and mine, there's usually uh, some bit of challenge, some bit of stress that we're getting used to. And what we'll see on social media is that this is a great opportunity for uh, quality time. Well, that's, that's a beautiful thing. I agree completely. And I hope that folks avail themselves of that. I also know that for families that have been uh, touched by addiction, uh, by mental illness, by trauma, that pretending that everything's okay just because we're spending a lot of time together is a pretty bad idea. So as hard as it is uh, to ask for what we need, to embrace vulnerability, and to express very simply what it is that we want and hope for, I hope that folks will make those investments. Chances are in the coming weeks, you're gonna be spending a lot more time with family than usual. And I guess maybe what's normative is we're all in separate rooms uh, using electronics. But if we do come together, let's come together authentically. Let's genuinely express uh, the changes that we hope to make, the further growth and healing that we want for our families. And let's be leaders, let's be uh, good partners, good parents, and let's have those conversations individually and collectively. But let's do so genuinely. Let's ask uh, the folks that we want to connect more fully with, uh, ask to, to talk, to, to share uh, where we're at and what we're hoping for. And my hope is that this is one of the silver linings that comes out of going through this hardship. My hope is that uh, families can experience further growth and healing. Uh, so try it out. Let me know uh, how that's working in your family. Uh, please email me, jim at sobernow.com. I'd love to hear how your family is maintaining through the pandemic. Uh, please give a like and a share to the videos so that we can continue to expand this conversation. Love to hear from you. Love to hear what your individual and family struggles are. And let's look at how we overcome those. Um, I wish the best for you and yours. Stay safe and please take especially good care of yourself at this time. Thanks.